Today is Thursday, September 22nd. We'll tell you about an escalation of Russia's war in Ukraine as Presidents Putin, Biden, and Zelensky make speeches on the same day and the backlash happening inside Russia right now. Also, what to know about a rare bipartisan climate agreement and new fraud accusations against former President Trump and his adult children. Plus, the Fed's latest rate hike, a weird but dangerous TikTok video that's gained some traction, and it's the first day of fall. Those stories and more news to know next. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. It's being called the biggest escalation since Russia invaded Ukraine. Russian President Putin called up 300,000 reserve troops, challenged the West for its support of Ukraine, and hinted at the possibility of a nuclear response. So when President Biden took the stage at the United Nations General Assembly just hours later, he singled out Putin directly, calling him a threat to the entire globe. Biden urged world leaders to rally together to support Ukraine. Thousands have been killed in the seven months of fighting in Ukraine, and many of the dead include innocent civilians caught in the explosions of Russian missiles and artillery. Biden said Russia's attacks on schools, hospitals and rail stations, quote, should make your blood run cold. Though Russian leaders still deny any wrongdoing. Ukrainian President Zelensky was able to address the U.N. as well through a video link from Ukraine. Zelensky says he and his country won't stop fighting until they completely remove Russian forces from their land. He called on other world leaders to hold Russia accountable for the destruction of his country. Some analysts say Putin's latest threats are out of desperation, since Ukraine has had some recent military victories that sent Russian troops retreating. And with the first call-up for reservists since World War II, The AP reports flights out of Russia filled up fast, and more than 1,000 people were arrested at rare anti-war protests across the country there. Back at the UN General Assembly, finding a solution that brings lasting peace is a top priority, though diplomats don't expect any major breakthroughs to happen this week. The Federal Reserve continues to take action to try to get inflation in the U.S. under control. As expected, the Fed hiked interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point for the third time in a row and says even more steep hikes are coming. Inflation is still near a 40-year high as prices for food, electronics, cars, and almost everything are up. So the Fed set interest rates to about 3 to 3.25 percent, bringing rates back to levels we haven't seen since 2008. Remember, less than a year ago, interest rates were hovering around zero percent. This latest increase by the Fed makes it more expensive to borrow money, so it impacts things like home and car loans and how much interest you might owe on credit card debt. Ultimately, the Fed is trying to bring down demand for goods and services because that demand is a key cause of inflation. Too many people are willing to pay high prices for things that are in shorter supply than usual. The Fed still has two meetings left this year and are expected to boost rates all the way up to around 4.5%. Some economists do worry it'll tip the U.S. into a recession, and if that does happen, it could impact the labor market. But for now, at least, the unemployment rate is still considered low and workers are still in demand. Stay tuned. There is more legal trouble now for former President Donald Trump. The latest? New York's attorney general is suing Trump and his three adult children, Ivanka, Eric, and Don Jr., accusing them of large-scale business and financial fraud. The civil lawsuit says Trump inflated the value of his properties by billions of dollars, misleading banks and others in order to get favorable bank loans. Then he would switch things around, decreasing the value of his properties to minimize the amount of tax he had to pay. New York Attorney General Tish James says she's got the evidence to back up these accusations, that over three years, her office interviewed 65 witnesses and reviewed millions of documents. She says they found Trump submitted more than 200 false and misleading valuations for his properties. James, referring to the title of Trump's memoir from the 80s, said, quote, Claiming you have money that you do not have does not amount to the art of the deal. It's the art of the steal. She's seeking $250 million in penalties and asking the court to ban the Trumps from ever running a company in New York again, among other things. When Trump was interviewed by investigators last month in this case, he invoked his Fifth Amendment right hundreds of times. As you know, the Fifth Amendment offers protection against self-incrimination. Well, now Trump and his lawyers are pushing back against these accusations. They say the attorney general is basing her lawsuit on a political agenda and not the facts. Trump himself called the lawsuit another witch hunt and said James is using all her time to protect the banks instead of fighting violent crime in her state. 
No word yet on when this civil case could end up in court. In the meantime, there's an update in the case about the documents the FBI seized from Trump's Mar-a-Lago home and resort. The Department of Justice is once again allowed to review the classified documents as part of its ongoing criminal investigation. Remember, before this, a judge had stopped the DOJ from looking at them until after a special master or a neutral legal expert could check them out. Well, the DOJ appealed and it worked. The appeals court reversed the lower court's decision. So far, no comment from Trump's lawyers about this. It's a rare bipartisan agreement. The Senate voted for the U.S. to approve an international climate treaty meant to phase out the use of hydrofluorocarbons, also known as HFCs. HFCs are highly potent greenhouse gases, often used in air conditioners and refrigerators. So this is a big deal for a lot of reasons. This is the first time in 30 years that the Senate has ratified or agreed to an international treaty on climate. Also, despite having a deeply divided Senate, more than two-thirds of senators voted for it. And the U.S. now joins more than 130 other nations who have agreed to it. HFCs warm the planet much faster than carbon dioxide. So climate experts believe by getting rid of them, it could help slow down the Earth's warming by about one degree by the end of the century, which can have a significant impact. Ultimately, though, this won't change too much here in the U.S. since the government has already started to reduce the use of HFCs and the industries impacted have turned to alternatives with a much smaller footprint. All right, we have more news for you still ahead, but first, a quick break for our sponsor. Every business owner knows how important their hiring decisions are. Behind most business success stories is a great team of people. Well, Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Find great talent faster through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed data in the U.S. And how convenient is it to have assessments right there ready to go? Indeed helps star applicants to shine with over 135 assessment tests from cooking to coding. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Indeed.com slash Newsworthy. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. The FDA is warning about something that seems pretty obvious and also disgusting, but apparently it's been done. Cooking chicken in NyQuil. The FDA says, don't do it. The agency says a few videos of people doing this started to gain traction, particularly on TikTok, and calls the idea silly, unappetizing, and dangerous. The FDA says even if you don't actually eat the cough syrup-coated chicken, the vapors from it or any over-the-counter drug that's been cooked can cause you to take in a dangerous amount without even realizing it. Since the FDA warning, NyQuil was then trending on Twitter, which then forced the company to respond and tell people not to do it. So far, there have not been any reports of anyone being hurt or dying from this. Speaking of trouble on TikTok, though, Kia and its parent company Hyundai are now being sued because of trending TikTok and YouTube videos. Yep, a TikTok challenge showed off a way to steal certain makes and models of their vehicles And you might remember several police departments even reported the number of thefts of the cars going up. Now, the victims of those crimes have filed a national class action lawsuit against the automakers because of a defect the TikTok challenge was able to expose. Hyundai has said it'll start selling and installing security kits. Apple is starting to make more of its devices outside of China. JP Morgan analysts say Apple may make one out of every four iPhones in India by the year 2025. India is the world's second biggest smartphone market after China. The analysts say Vietnam will also contribute to Apple devices, making 20% of iPad and Apple Watches, 5% of MacBooks, and 65% of AirPods in three years' time. We actually talked about this gradual change in the industry a couple of weeks ago when Apple released its latest devices. And other reports have said parts of Google's newest Pixel phone will be produced in India and Vietnam too. This is all part of a big shift in the industry, since China has long been the go-to spot to make the world's high-tech electronics. But now there are a lot of tensions over trade, Taiwan, COVID lockdowns, and supply chain issues. And some companies don't want to risk it. 
All right, it is time to embrace all things pumpkin now. It is officially the first day of fall. While Labor Day is the unofficial end of summer, the technical autumn season begins today with the autumnal equinox. During the equinox, day and night are both about 12 hours long in most parts of the world. Equinox occurs at the same moment all around the world, too. It's the exact moment when the sun is directly above the equator. And it begins a little after 9 p.m. Eastern time. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's the beginning of fall, while it's the first day of spring for those in the Southern Hemisphere. For us, though, it means days will start to become shorter than nights as the sun rises later and sets earlier. So, so long, summer. Here's to a fantastic fall. Well, that's it for the main news today. So now it's time for Thing to Know Thursday. But first, thanks to our sponsor. Just because two things are kind of the same doesn't mean they're actually the same thing. There can be a huge variety in quality. And that's true for whether we're talking about the little things in life, like choosing which place to get sushi from or what pair of jeans to buy, or the bigger decisions, like what doctor to trust. With ZocDoc, you can find the right doctor for you, helping to find one that makes sure you feel heard and are truly taken care of. And ZocDoc will help make sure the doctor is also in network and in your neighborhood. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. Yes, read verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments. Now, when you walk into that doctor's office, you'll hopefully be set to see someone in your network who gets you. Every month, millions of people use ZocDoc, so simply go to ZocDoc.com newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C, ZocDoc.com newsworthy, ZocDoc.com newsworthy. Okay, now back to Thing to Know Thursday. Have you registered to vote for the 2022 midterm elections in November? You may have gotten that question this week because a couple of days ago was National Voter Registration Day. That's the United States' largest single-day effort to register voters. And this year celebrates 10 years of the nonpartisan holiday. It's always observed on the fourth Tuesday in September. The idea is to raise awareness about where people can register and to reach people who may not have planned to vote at all. Organizers say this year broke another record as they got millions more people prepped to cast their ballots. If you're not already registered to vote, it is not too late. Deadlines vary by state, with some requiring you to register weeks in advance, but others allowing you to register on Election Day. So if you still need to register to vote or check your state's election deadlines or just verify that you are already registered to vote, you can do that all at nationalvoterregistrationday.org or just vote.org. We posted several links to help you out in today's episode notes on thenewsworthy.com. The general election is less than 50 days away now on November 8th. All right, thank you so much for being here and listening each day and for telling your friends and family about the show. We'll be back with much more news tomorrow by 4 a.m. Until then, have a great day. 